As we said at the beginning, we've never done this before. This, is, this has been an experiment and a, labor, a laboratory and a, and a space for us to learn and hopefully for you. So we're, we're really grateful for this feedback and how good is that? Um, inspiring and thought-provoking are some of the main words that have come through. So that's, it's, a, it's a real privilege and very humbling um, to have been part of today. And thanks again to Heath and Beth who, I'm stood here, They've done most of the work. When I say most, all of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you. I want to just for, for a moment, we're gonna ask you to do a feedback survey of the overall day in a moment, but I just wanted to share um, a couple of thoughts really. You, you've experienced so much today that I hope has prompted some thoughts, some feelings, some intrigue, some questions maybe, some doubts, some confusion, um, but hopefully some excitement. We've spent, as Together Active Future, quite a long time thinking about how, how do we change things f for people who really matter? How can we make things better for lives um, that really need something to be different? And sometimes I like to pose the question, if I want you to imagine for a second, um, that there's a man in his 40s and he's overweight, he stays at home most of the time and orders takeaway most nights and he's developed type 2 diabetes largely because of his diet. Who's to blame? If we were to say that that same man, some of you might think, well, he's to blame. It's his fault. He's got some personal responsibility that he needs to take. But if I was to say that this same man a year ago had a great job as a manager of a shop but was made redundant and his universal credit didn't come for just over 12 weeks, he couldn't afford to get to job interviews and he had to end up moving out of his house into a, the only council house he could find was in a different town. We had no friends which is one of the reasons that he didn't go out anymore. Who's Who's to blame now? Who's, whose fault is it? Is it still his fault? How about if we said his partner passed away a couple of years ago and has been struggling with teenage children who won't go to school? And the school don't really do anything apart from phone him up and complain and fine him for not getting his kids to school. Um, and he's feeling the weight of the world and he's depressed, and so he goes to his GP regular, every week taking up appointments, seeking out, reaching up, reaching for help. Who's to blame now? As we think about the people who live in our communities, it's easy to say, and I think I was in this place a few years ago, if people are inactive, we're working in a physical activity project, if people are inactive, it's easy to say, look mate, the pavement's free, just go for a walk, it's not hard. Just get active. It's easy. You've only got yourself to blame. And I think we've learned over the last few years that the world's a bit more complex than that. And actually, whilst there is a sense of personal responsibility in some ways, where to blame? We collectively, the royal we, and many people outside of this room, we've designed over generations, a society that is really difficult to live in for people, that doesn't make a lot of sense, um, where we make decisions. You can imagine this man can't afford the internet at home, he goes to the library to keep in touch with his friends in the other town. Well, the library just closed. What does he do now? How does he stay connected? Well, he probably draws on our services, right? Um, there's something for us to think about in the way in which the world is designed and our communities are designed that needs to be different. And if there's gonna be something different, then it's gonna come down to the leadership. It's gonna come down to the decisions that we make, to the priorities, the things we, we hold as a priority, to the way in which we distribute resources and finances, to the way in which we connect and collaborate and share services, and think about how, how can I deal not just with this man's 
weight or type 2 diabetes or truancy issues or housing issues, but it's just a person, not a collection of services. So we have to figure out ways to work together. We have to figure out ways to collaborate. We have to figure out ways to which we can join the system together to make a difference for the people who need it the most. And we are the people. But if we're going to redesign a world that is predominantly designed around contracts and ownership, I read a really interesting study by Kentucky University who said over the last 20 years, they've, they've looked at popular music, um, modern written novels, and newspaper articles and magazines and online journals and blogs. And there's been a dramatic shift of pronouns from we and us to I and me. Big shift in the last 20 years. Much more prevalent use of the words I and me. And we have to think about as a system and as leaders, are we in the I and me category? Or are we thinking about ourselves as us and we? And in our communities too. Are we focused on I and me or us and we? And I believe that we'll only be able to solve some of these problems as we shift from the contractual, which is an I and me. What do I get? What do you get? What do we, how do we connect with each other? I own this plot of land. We draw a line around it, don't we, right? Land registry, you buy a house. We draw a line around it. That's mine. Well, I'm not sure the earth was like, I'm not sure it is really ours, if you know what I mean. Um, we put boundaries around Blackpool and Rossendale and Burnley and we decide like, Maybe the world is more relational and less transactional. Maybe we need fewer lines and more connectivity between people if we're really gonna solve some of these issues. And all of that, all of that comes down to leadership and us making different decisions and different choices collectively together. And that's what we were inviting you to do today and that's what Together Active Future is really inviting Pennine Lancashire and wider Lancashire to do is to think about how do we make different choices? How do we lead in different ways? How do we connect together better so that the world is different for the people that really matter, for the people who really need things to be different? Because what, what we have right now is terrible. It's a terrible design. It's a terrible design. So we need to design it different, and that's going to come down to each of us. So our invitation for today is for you to choose to be different to choose you, to use your resources differently, to connect in new ways, and to see the world in terms of us and we, rather than I and me. Thank you. So.